on Tech Talk today. We are talking about money, and then we'll talk about some messaging. So let's start about money, of course. That's the most important thing. Well, interesting thing, I should say. Mm -hmm. Bitcoins. Yes, cryptocurrencies in general. Well, but the Bitcoins <laughs> to the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, because <laughs> everyone wants to mine Bitcoins because they're the big thing right now. Okay, so a lot of people don't know that all, although you could buy Bitcoins, you can actually mine them too. So okay, instead so of... Kobe, uh, before we go into what the actual mm. story is, maybe there are some people who don't know what Bitcoins and cryptocurrency are. Sure. So what is it? It's a digital currency. So it's a decentralized digital currency like... There we have Bitcoin, we have Litecoin, we have Dogecoin. All these ones, the reason why we call them de decentralized is that they don't have a central bank. Okay. But they're dependent on... And like how the Ghana city has a, a exactly, bank of Ghana. has a bank of Ghana. So Bitcoin is decentralized and it's a ledger that's managed by a technology we call the blockchain. So users can verify transaction and this verification of these transactions is what we call the mining. Okay. So if you, you verify a transaction, you're rewarded. Mm. So that keeps people interested in the system. Okay. So this so kind of what are you rewarded with? With bitcoins. Okay. But not a huge amount, just mm. a little bit. And it's the the. I understand currently miners are getting twelve point five bitcoins per bits. Twelve point five bits yes. per verification. Yes, and yeah. it, it changes with time because it's a mathematical equation that you are, you know, you are trying to solve. And the more equations that are solved, the more complicated it gets. So with every com um, this thing, equation that's solved, a more complex one is generated. Okay. And then it keeps going on and on and on. So previously, you could mine or you could verify, you could you know, answer these equations with very simple computers with graphics cards. Mm -hmm. But now you need an application-specific integrated circuit chip, an ASIC chip for short. ASIC? So, yes, ASIC. I'll ASIC. Remember that. Yes. So what it does is it's dedicated to you know, specific tasks not mm -hmm. like well, computers that can do a lot of things. A6 chips are dedicated. Mm -hmm. So previously they were used in the TV industry, but now they are being used in the mining industry, in the tech mining, the cryptocurrency okay. mining industry. So Samsung is getting into this business. How? They are making these chips. You know Samsung is the largest chip maker in the world now. Okay. And they decided that, hey, we make memory chips, we make microchips, we make processors. We want to make A6 mining chips, which mm -hmm. people can buy and use to mine Crypto. Cryptocurrency. Exactly. Mm. So with that being said, Samsung is going big. And these guys, they have money. I mean, if you look <laughs> at what Samsung is into, you know they're the largest ship manufacturers in the world too. Yeah, you mentioned that. So um, what, is it going to be a high-end product that you can buy and put in your computer or they're going to be embedded in the computer's account? No, they don't come. You don't put them in a computer. They're dedicated to that one task that they're created oh. for. Oh. So it's just oh. like a small computer with certain micro microchips on it that you just program to mine. And that's okay. all it does. Okay. And will it be expensive? Will it be on a high end or it will be on the... Now, the ones we have on the market are quite expensive. Mm. So we can say Samsung being Samsung, they may undercut the price so they can sell more. Mm -hmm. Because those who are manufacturing right now, they don't have the capacity that Samsung has. I mean, Samsung mm -hmm. has a huge capacity. Yeah. These are the people who they provide the industry with the largest you know, screen, they produce the largest amount of screens for mobile phones and right. TVs and everything. So they have the capacity to produce these things in large quantities, therefore making the price affordable, hopefully affordable. Okay, okay. So uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you with my Samsung, what's it going to be called anyway? A cryptocurrency chip? Um, it's going to be called a Samsung Miner, but it would have a Samsung name Samsung Miner. Oh, okay. you call it an S Miner. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Galaxy mine. <laughs> they may come up with their own coin. Not everybody's launching a coin. Oh, okay. You know Kodak launched their coin too. Interesting. Yes. I mean, the guys who are making cameras are now into crypto. Hmm. We should be considering it's, 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 creating our own coin. You know? Yeah, what we call it? Found of our coin. Desk coin. News desk coin. Yeah, yeah. And, like and we'll, we'll sell it to the other programs. Anyway, uh, but Facebook is also talking about Bitcoin now. Yes. Facebook says, you know what? We're banning all cryptocurrency adverts on our platform. Why? Because people are using it to fraud people. You know, they're offering you an initial coin offering, an ICO. An ICO is basically like when they go public, you know, when businesses When a company go, goes public, like, a, like uh, an IPO, initial an IPO. public offering. Exactly. So this is an ICO, initial mm. coin offering. So you have a 
crypto saying that we're offering you $25,000 in the hopes that when it gets profitable, you get larger shares. Okay. So they do all this and then some people put their money and then the coin goes down and then you lose all your money and there's mm. no recourse for these people. Mm. So, huh. Because there's no central bank in the exactly. first place. Well, not necessarily, but there's no regulation. Mm. We don't want a central bank in the cryptos. They'll control everything. We like it being decentralized. <laughs> <laughs> but we need regulations when it comes to anyone coming up with a coin. I mean, somebody can say he's tra starting Galamse coin, bring 10,000 Ghana cities, and when it becomes profitable, I'll give you larger shares. And then you go put your money in it, and then Galamse coin crashes because there's a ban on Galamse. <laughs> <laughs> and then you lose all your money. And you can't go I and tell it. anyone because you go, ah, we told you, don't go and put your money in ICOs. So Facebook says, you know what? We're not allowing people to advertise ICOs, cryptocurrency, or anything. But people are speculating that Facebook could be launching their own coin soon, and that's why they're doing that. It's just a speculation. It is a speculation, but tell me a bit about how, what that could mean for the Bitcoin market, because we know that mm. at the moment it thrives on perception, it thrives on popularity. Yes. I remember that when it was announced that 50 Cent had some bitcoins that he forgot the shares <laughs> went up immediately yeah. what could that do if a big company like facebook enters the bitcoin market it's just like with any product or business when you get an endorsement from a brand that people know mm. people would you know it go becomes towards more credible it becomes more credible it becomes more attractive and um, what's the, uh, the boxer mayweather mm -hmm. he advertised for a coin oh that went down so people put their money into it, and then later on, the coin went downhill, so they lost their money. Mm. But you see, people went there because it was Mayweather. So okay. Facebook, starting a coin, everyone's going to be interested because, mm. hey, this is Facebook. Facebook is big. Facebook is trustworthy. And, and it's currently the second most trafficked web website in the world exactly. after Google. And then you have it on your phone. So imagine Facebook has a coin. You can make payments on your phone through the Facebook app and all that. It'd make it very, very easy, convenient, and people would jump on it. Mm. Interesting. Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. if you're watching, <laughs> there's some <laughs> advice for you. Okay, so people's tweets are disappearing. Right. <sighs> this problem of fake likes, fake retweets, fake everything. Fake accounts. Fake accounts. Fake trends. Fake trends, fake news, fake human <laughs> beings, fake everything. Everything is just going fake right can we, now. Can we talk about <laughs> fake hair and nails after that? <laughs> so ahead. everything fake. And there's a lot of fake accounts on Twitter, mm. and then they just found out. They just found out. People have known this all along. I mean, people are I buying mean, followers. Yeah. And you're telling us that like, you're now finding out. Come on, they knew. But, so they decided that, okay, you know what? We're going to clear, we're going to rid our platform of all the fake accounts. And then people notice, so I have 3,000 followers. And then the next moment you wake up and you have like 2,100. Mm -hmm. And it's dropping 1,000. And the tweets are also disappearing. Mm. So the, not only are the accounts disappearing, the likes and then the tweets and the retweets they come with are all disappearing. <laughs> so all those fake popular people on Twitter, I'm sorry. Uh, but you're losing fans. It's not, they're not dying. They're just going back to where they came from, <laughs> oblivion. <laughs> I hope but it comes you know, to all other platforms, though, Facebook and Instagram, too. Yeah, because I did have a friend telling me earlier that with Instagram, it's becoming unfortunate because he has a lot of followers, but yeah. they are not engaging. Exactly. So because they are fake accounts, he has about 15,000 followers, but he's not getting enough likes. You, you got about 50, 40. Because, yeah, you buy them. So, I mean. Next week, I'll show you a video on how people do these fake likes. You go to a like farm, mm. and they have phones, like, Thousands of them. Okay, that's for next week. Because <laughs> when we start, I don't think Emmanuel Abadjo Yafi will get time to do business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really uh, interested to hear how that happens. So thank you very much, Kobe thank Nkuma. You me. You're our IT consultant. And listen to Geek Squad yeah, 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 on yeah. Joy 99.7 FM every Tuesday at 7 p.m. From 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Straight. Great. All right. Oh, yes, but there's one more before, before you go. Mm. Um, we'll talk about Geek Squad a bit, but um, Telegram. Yes. It was taken off the App Store temporarily. Okay, so what is Telegram? Telegram is a... Let me be biased a bit. It's a better version of WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had you to catch myself. You said was being biased. I had to catch myself. Okay. I love okay. Telegram. It's the best messaging app I've ever used. What is so, what's so nice about it? Security. Okay. If you're an IT guy, you know security is the most important thing when it comes to IT. And mm. they give you the best end-to-end -end encryption. People haven't been able to crack that. Even authorities elsewhere haven't been able to crack this. 
So you find that, and they're always complaining, terrorists were even using Telegram. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that's good. So, so when you say end-to-end -end encryption, why should that matter to me as a, as a user? Imagine that you are saying something to me. Okay. And everyone here can hear you. How can they because hear Because you? you're loud enough. Mm. But imagine if you're whispering directly into my ear and then they can't hear you. That's end-to-end -end encryption. Basically, you're just talking to me directly. I'm the only one that can hear you. No one can eavesdrop into our conversation. Even no if they eavesdrop, the they can't understand what we're saying because before the word comes out of your mouth, it's, you know, it's changed to it's another changed language. Into another language. And when it gets to me, then it comes, you know, it's decrypted. So that's how it is. So why is Apple banning it? Apple is banning it because Telegram has grown, like, very fast. And it's created, they have channels, they have super groups. You know WhatsApp has a limitation of about 256 members in a group? Yeah. It can go up to 10,000 in Telegram. Wow. So people are creating super groups, people are creating channels, and unfortunately for them, you can't control everyone in these groups. Mm. You know how you're in a group and then someone may just send pornographic material, and you're like, hey, yeah. hey why are you guys doing this? In Telegram, where you have 10,000 people in a group, someone can just drop something like that and you're, you're not fast enough if you're an admin to remove it and maybe that kids in the group so then it becomes a problem so apple says hey telegram you guys are not paying attention to this problem and it's causing a problem for our users you know apple is very tight fisted on these kind yeah, of things so yeah. they said we're dropping it fix this before we put it back so they dropped it and they had so they want Telegram to have better controls in it. Yes, better ways for people to report content that is not appropriate. Okay. So if it is pornography, child pornography, or anything, you should be able to report it. But currently, there was no. I mean, not currently. Then there was no way to report it. I think okay. they fixed that, so it's back on the App Store. It's back on the Apple App Store. Yes. Okay. So good news for you. I don't use an Apple, so it's not good news. For me. Ah, it's good news for people that use apples. But people, so people like you who use Apple, people yeah, like Telegram. People like me, they don't use Apples. Too many restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if you get if, you, if I get a lawsuit from Apple. I know. Apple, I'm <laughs> Thank you very much, Kobe Kuma, for bringing us the Thank latest you for having in me. the tech world. And of course, let me remind you again: Geek Squad is on Joy ninety nine point seven FM every Tuesday at seven PM from seven to eight PM. You don't want to miss this. It's now time for business with Emmanuel Abwaje. We have will be talking about food security, how you get food into your homes and one district, one factory.